Hey friends, good to see you again. So let's talk about a few things today since this is the week of the new moon in Cancer in that very important opposition to Pluto where we have very important internal changes taking place and also changes within the home environment as well related to security. So this is a very wonderful month to really seriously start talking about permaculture and how we can create our own security. So this particular week is the best week for planting. Always the week of the new moon. I always plant the full week of the new moon, not just on the day or the couple of days surrounding the new moon, but the entire week. And I will also plant if need be when is not the new moon, but as a regular habit, because the moon teaches us good habits. We are creatures of habit. And um, the, the moon phases are a really good measure of what and when to do. It's a good reminder. These are, uh, it, it gives us a, a pace which, which, which to set our lives by. So this entire week, planting anything is a good idea. This day in particular, the 18th, this is the best day of the month for starting projects, as well as the 18th of August, the 17th and 18th of August. So uh, I will be moving a greenhouse and preparing a place to put that new greenhouse building a willow fence in front of my little cottage, uh, building raised beds, quite a few things that are about getting this particular garden finished. So it's, it's a good time to start projects related to anything. It certainly doesn't have to be horticulture or gardening it's anything in our life where we want to get something off the ground we will see the results of that in a couple of weeks when we get to the full moon so let's talk a little bit about what permaculture is because I know a lot of us hear that word a lot it's become very trendy over the past 20 years or so to hear that word but a lot of us don't actually know what it means we know that it means growing stuff but what does it mean beyond that? It's about responsibility. That's basically what it is, is taking responsibility for your own life and not being somebody that takes or consumes, but somebody that produces and that offers and that gives. So it's very much the, uh, the grown up Saturn version of ourself if, if we're really living this lifestyle or applying these principles to our life because a permaculture is something that will change your life. How you get your food has everything to do with what kind of a society you are and what kind of a family society you are. Just how a family goes about getting their food is gonna shape how they grow and how they relate to each other. So when we're talking about permaculture, we're talking about sustainability. We're used to driving by large fields that are really planted with one thing or very few things. I know all of us are familiar with that site where it just goes on for acres and acres and acres and it is, it is one thing or one thing beside another thing and we see those long straight rows that go on forever. And that is agriculture. That is a system of producing food that is very wasteful and it is very hierarchical. You know I have a problem with that word. High, <laughs> it's very much rooted in hierarchy. <laughs> Every, everybody who knows me knows I can't say that one. So there's a, there's a top to bottom effect that comes with agriculture and, and it's very much a, a a cruel system of production it really does not take into account the human condition the condition of the animal the condition of the land it is about commodifying the earth 
itself and, and everything in it and on it, it really does not contribute to healthy relationships or a healthy society and it is very much an outdated system that needs to go. And it's gonna go because we are getting ever closer to the age of Aquarius, which is a long, long way away. We're just at the threshold of that door right now, but this is the seed period of that era where the people right now uh, getting these ideas into motion, these are the, what Dane Rudyard, the infinite astrologer, called seed men, seed people, people that begin the entirety of the next cycle, so the foundation of what's to come. So it's a very important time in history because we do have this major transition from the old ways to the new ways. And it's time for all of us to become very educated about what is going on, what, what are these changes, and how can we contribute to this. So I'm going to be talking a lot about the permaculture principles that are central to this idea. So let's first take a look at this diagram that I have drawn up here and talk about this for a few minutes. So let's take a look at how the earth signs relate to the topic of permaculture and how the three of them together result in integration of these three different ideas, these three different um, ways of producing food. So in Taurus, we see hunting and gathering. We see the value of indigenous knowledge. Wild plants, wild animals, a lot of our traditional ideas um, knowledge that has been passed down, knowledge that has really always been with certain cultures. So we really want to respect and look to what has always worked. And that is what we see in Taurus. When we look at Virgo, we see horticulture, cultivation of a garden, intensive production, domestic animals. This is the value of delicacy. Um, there's a lot of beauty in Virgo as well. There's a, there's a lot of beauty in horticulture, in the cultivation of a garden. And that's often what's missing when we're looking at agriculture all by itself. It can be a very ugly and uh, unsightly and uh, and, and cruel system. But when we look at Virgo, we're looking at how gardeners really gather. Because when you look at horticultural societies, they actually really don't work that hard. They work for a few hours, but there's actually quite a lot of standing around and mixing and talking and relating to each other. And um, it's, it's not the, the blood, sweat, and tears that you see um, often when we're looking at, at agriculture. It is much more of a social, uh, even, even friendly system. So then we're looking at Capricorn, which represents in itself agriculture. And I would say the negative side of Capricorn and Saturn is what we would relate to agriculture in itself. So we have cultivation of permanent fields, domestic livestock, we have farming, and this is the value of commodity. And there is some room in permaculture for some aspects of agriculture, some aspects of uh, more modern farming, but what we're doing is we're taking the best and we're mixing it with other um, supportive systems and elements around it. So we have a sustainable system that is, is, has a synergistic effect to it. It requires less... Um, in intensity, it requires less fertilizer, it requires less work. 
So we are looking at how can we plant and grow food in such a way where we are taking into account the whole system. How is one thing helping another and contributing to another and how is it all working together? So we aren't just dealing with bits and parts of a system that are expected to do well on their own and need a lot of supplementation and um, intensive energy and failure when we're looking at agriculture alone. So with permaculture, we have the integration of all of the earth signs. We have the hunting and gathering, we have the horticulture, and we have some elements of agriculture, but they're working together in such a way where they are supporting each other, they are lending to each other. So when we're applying permaculture principles to our life, and that could be in a variety of ways, because these principles are useful across the board. It's not just in food production. You can really look to them as a guide in all aspects of life and in many different systems. So when we adopt these principles and we really truly live them, we don't just claim that we do, but we actually do it. We increase uh, the measure of responsibility that we are taking and, and are capable of taking. We are practicing sustainability and we will experience a feeling of security and resilience that is awesome and it is rare, but it is something that you can get for yourself. You can have that feeling that you can cope. Any variety of things can happen any variety of crises can occur and you can cope. You can have that feeling of, of comfort and safety and security. That comes from knowing that you can live in such a way where you could allow for the changes that are going to come. You can even welcome these changes that are going to come and be prepared and be in a position to really be ahead of the game so you can be there to help others. You can be there to share the knowledge that you have already gained because you were smart. So I will be talking a lot more about this subject. The new moon in Cancer month is the absolute best time to begin. I've been teasing this a lot over the past couple of years and putting out very intermittent videos, but um, I think it's time to get really serious. And I will be seeing you guys super soon, and we will be talking a lot more about this.